a lot of this like intergender dysfunction is a consequence of white supremacy's effort to keep us divided so we're easier to conquer, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in, in Africa, they did it by separating people by tribes, yeah. um, creating arbitrary countries where they really didn't need to be. Mm -hmm. And then instead of Africa speaking with one voice, Nigeria saying one thing, Ghana saying one thing, uh, Liberia saying another thing. But then within the black family, they use feminism to lure black women away from civil rights. So now I'm going to identify primarily with my womanhood mm -hmm. outside, I mean, instead of my blackness, mm -hmm. right? And then in the modern day, I think the biggest thing is like, think about it, if you're a real estate agent, is it better for you to sell one house to a family or two houses to two single people? Oh, absolutely the latter. For sure. So there's an incentive, there's literally a, a, a financial incentive for the power structure, whether we're talking about white supremacy or just like capitalism, to keep people individualistic, to keep people focused on happiness and what's in my best interest and romance and the options that I have, as opposed to us coming together for a greater purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think that plays out with the racial, uh, not the racial, but uh, ethnic divide between black people of the diaspora. Appreciate you, my brother. A lot bigger than I thought it would be, but we here. Yes, sir. The biggest thing that I've been trying to get people to focus on is like, our bullshit helps the enemy. And our inability to actually listen to each other and critique ourselves helps the enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, because even like Manosphere niggas, like, sometimes they're too afraid to say what's wrong with the manosphere. Like they can't even criticize Kevin, you know? And similarly, on the female side, there's a lot of women, you know, that they'll repost. They might say some good shit every now and then, but yeah. sometimes they say bullshit. And it's like, I should be able to call out the people on my side who might not be consistent with the message to encourage y'all to call out people on y'all side who are not consistent with the message. So that's my biggest thing, man. What's your thoughts on the pink pill? Divesting? <laughs> not necessarily, I'm not sure if that's what it is, but I know I've seen uh, MCR post about it once, um, about the pink pill, showed a clip of it. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it was, it was him, it was Auburn Preach. Yeah. And what the woman was spitting, it was like, you know, you have to, pretty much it was like all about her. Mm -hmm. And then... Like the sprinkle, sprinkle lady. Her too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's, 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 if, if I'm being real, I think it's all under the same umbrella of divesting. It's all under the same umbrella of, as a woman, my job is to just exist, live a soft life. And you know, my my dude should trick over mm -hmm. me. My dude should, his job is to pay my bills and pay for my nails and hair and shit like that. Um, which is really, I call it soft core prostitution. But people don't look at it that way. But Pink Pill though, it started with um, Crystal Karazin. Yeah. Um, her but, but ironically, she, uh, she got a divorce from her white husband. You know, but we don't hear those stories. Of course you don't. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, I think also with a lot of these girls growing up without fathers, they feel like they don't need men. So if they're gonna tolerate us, the least we can do is trick on them. I see another angle. Not to say that that one is not true. Welcome. I was watching, um, I stayed away from this show since its inception, but I only got into it. I was repotting um, a plant mm -hmm. on Sunday. Shout out to Chris Kelly. Um, black man, he owns a shop, came out of COVID. Mm -hmm. So as I'm repotting it, I saw this uh, the show called Rap Shit. And I was like, all right, let me go ahead and get this a shot. Mm -hmm. Love Issa Rae. She's actually somebody I want to pitch to. And um, by like the eighth episode, like at first, like you got the, the main the main quote unquote character mm -hmm. and she's a uh, very you know straightforward down on her luck she wants to be an artist but she's very conscious mm -hmm. over the course of eight episodes her other friend that started off as like a, a stripper reformed prostitute um when he got into a rap group then you see based on their love life they begin to switch mm -hmm. the uh 
the um, the reformed prostitute, she go. I can't. I'm saying these names because I can't remember the names. Mm -hmm. But because of what her child is going through, and what her child is trying to get was was doing between her and her baby's father. Now she's starting to question like maybe. Maybe I should give him another chance because he's starting to change around too. Because he's giving in to actually leaning on somebody else when life is starting to hit him. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, nobody's looking out for him or whatever. And she's showing up like, I'm going to pay your card. I'm going to pay your card note. Mm -hmm. So the more he's opening up, accepting help, and the more the daughter is showing like, hey, I want y'all two together. On the other side, the main character, she just got hurt by her boyfriend. Mm. The one that looks to be doing right. And now she's turning sour. But there was a point in the story at like, like I said, ninth episode, old girl that has a child, she's like, hey, you know, my baby father was like, hey, um, I want to take you over here. Is he trying to take me on a date? The main character was like, yeah, but don't you go for it. Mm. Like, leave him alone. Da -da -da. Mind, she just got out of a painful relationship. The way that he did her like on Instagram Live, not supporting her. And now she's messing with uh, this Caribbean dude mm -hmm. that's been trying to get hers from the jump. <clears throat> so, Fabulous said a, um, a dope lyric. He got a lot of quotables. Um, but it's uh, called um, Friends of Foes or something like that. Fab, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. Nah. But uh, he was like, um, I heard female and the whole friend is a bad team. And I've experienced that personally before. It was all good until one of her, her friends got into the situation and started saying, well, he doing X, Y, and Z, and it wasn't causing to make a decision, and everybody's like, what's wrong with you? Mm. And I was like, I, I ain't had to say nothing. You already know what it was. So I see that a lot more. Cause I get the, you know, not growing up with a father in the house. Mm. But I also see the other part where your friends can also... The competition piece. Yes. They're looking at it, and they're pouring their seeds into it, but because they're a trusted source, it's like, well, maybe you're right. Right. And I believe I see that more often than not versus the no father in the house. Mm. That's a good point. Because I've seen, a, I've talked to someone with, with the father in the house, mm. and she, it's like, She still why? has that same mindset? She's hard, like. My sister. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I was going to say, it's both. My, my, my sister, I think it's not, when I say no father, I don't necessarily mean like a complete absent father. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I mean absent-minded, like not, not hands-on involved. Mm -hmm. Like my dad wasn't hands-on involved. He was there, but like when people meet me and they assume like, oh, your dad probably put you on a game. Nah, I learned all this shit by myself. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell me about women, money, nothing. Yeah, yeah. So I think similarly, um, a lot of the people who are setting the cultural trends, right, musicians, actors, this and that, they are coming from those single mother or no father or absent father or absentee, mentally father environment. So in their mind, it already cheapens the value of men. And then the general kind of zeitgeist is girl power, we can do this shit better than y'all, we don't really need y'all. Mm -hmm. And I think all that feeds into this sense of, well, if we're going to use y'all, y'all need to be making yourselves useful because you don't have any intrinsic value in my life. Mm -hmm. I can get my own money, you know what I'm saying? I can, I can, the government is gonna protect me. Yeah. I, can, I can live by myself, so you gotta be tricking or else what's the point? Even if I have a dad. Yeah. Some of these good dads are fucking their daughters up too. Yeah. Because they set the bar so high. If you're not doing what my dad did, even though I'm his responsibility, mm -hmm. if you're not doing that date one, then you're not. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, come on now. Be reasonable. Be reasonable. When I was growing up, I would say the old Jesus in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They would be the ones correcting when the father wasn't there, they were the ones that corrected us. I've had someone I tried to join the gang, he was like, bro, this ain't for you. Mm -hmm. Another one of my friends, he was like, man, you the, you the pookie of the neighborhood. I mean, not the pookie. Um, whatever the character was in uh, Boys in the Hood, they're gonna, they gonna kill me for this. Mm -hmm. um, you talking about Ice Cube's character? Not Ice Cube, but the, the, good, the, the good brother. The good son. Cuba? Cuba's character? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Cuba Gooden's character. Mm -hmm. And he was like, nah, you him or the hood. You gotta, you gotta make it out. Mm -hmm. You can't, you not, you not, you can do this, but. This ain't what you want. This ain't, this ain't it. So, 
around the, early, the late 90s, early 2000s, all of them getting locked up, pulled out. Mm -hmm. I mean, even Tukey Williams, he got he got pulled out, not because of what, necessarily what he did, but what he's about to do. He was about to unify everybody. Mm -hmm. That's not a good thing. Well, in the enemy side. Right. Um, the ones that's going against us. Right. So all of them are going, and I just had people that's learning from rap. Yeah. True story. I was looking. <laughs> there was a Joel Santana song. Yeah. That legit taught you. He was at least teaching you how to cook crap. Mm -hmm. I tried it. Mom, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I tried to do it uh, to impress some girl. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it luckily, by the grace of God, it didn't work out. <laughs> but that was my. I was like, I need to impress this. I need to do that. Right. I'm gonna learn from Joel's. Right. He's teaching us how to do it. So it's that you know. I can't go to my I can't go to my next man to learn or get on with what he's doing, right? Because he's trying to do something else, and it's kind of intuitive to what people think I should be doing. And to that point, like <clears throat> what I've been kind of telling women recently is like, y'all don't give yourselves enough credit. Like, what y'all think girl power is is really boy power. <laughs> it's just being manifested <laughs> by a woman, mm -hmm. right? Real girl power. Yeah, I see what and you real mean. women's power is in their ability to regulate the type of men or the type of male behavior that we see uh, proliferate, mm -hmm. right? Because just like you said, there are a lot of dudes who the reason why they got into a certain lifestyle is because they saw that was what was going to get them the type of results that they wanted mm -hmm. with women the whole nine or even status among men to get women. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, when women in our community, unfortunately, choose to continue to replicate a certain archetype of black man, mm -hmm. not only do we see more of those black men, because the apple tends to not fall, fall, fall too far from the tree, especially if you're raising it in that same soil, right? Yeah. The same hood, same environment, the whole nine. But not only that, even the brothers like me and you, it tells us that if we want that outcome, which means progeny, which means legacy and things like that, I have to make myself, or at least make myself appear like the men that I'm seeing successful in this right. ultimate mating endeavor, which is what every species is trying to do. So now you're having the, the, the Pookies and Ray Rays, as we call them, literally replicated. But then you're having the Russells turn themselves into futures to compete. Right. So over time, women's demand have ca has caused an overabundance of shitty dudes and, 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 and a scarcity of really good men. And then nowadays, the good dudes are not saying, okay, I'm going to turn into future. They're saying, oh, I'm going to get my passport. Yeah. They're taking a whole different route. They're taking a whole different route, but the result is the same. It's, it's the exact same. You know, I haven't been a fan of... I, I don't have as much of a problem with with Passport Bros as I do Save Yourself Black Man, that movement. Save Yourself Black Man. Yeah, SYSBM. That's a new one in my ears. Yeah, yeah, that, that was... I would say that was probably the foundation of Passport Bros. But... The reason I don't mind passport bros is like, yo, if you're going to South Africa, I don't blame you. <laughs> if you're going to Nigeria, bro, I don't, have you seen those women? Bro? I've like, seen them. I don't I've blame you. If, 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 if you're keeping it black, I don't blame you at all. Hey, you put up a slasher. I was like, yo. Listen. Yo. <laughs> listen. That's, listen. I can show you some shit. But anyway, the point, the point that I'm making is like, as men in particular, mm -hmm. We can't afford to be pie in the sky, hoity-toity, um, shit is going to be sweet. We have to anticipate problems, like mm -hmm. I talk about all the time. To provide or protect worth a damn, you have to kind of be pessimistic. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be a bodyguard, you have to anticipate there is a mugger on every single corner. So with that being said, to your point, the dudes in Colombia, mm -hmm. they're coming back and saying, oh no, it's a bunch of single mothers over there. However, which is the part that I, I think our women kind of gloss over in the States is like, mm -hmm. even though they're single mothers in other places, they still have those intangibles that men here are complaining about. 
because even Kevin Samuels was saying men will go down in looks to go up in cooperation. Yes. Men will go down in, oh, you got kids to go up in cooperation. Yes. So I don't know if our women are thinking about competition on an international stage. I don't think they're thinking of Colombian women want our men too. Mm -hmm. South African women want our men too. Are, are we being competitive, mm -hmm. right? Because guess what? Men are running to Thailand to find wives, mm -hmm. to Colombia to find wives, to some other places to find wives. Are men running to the United States to find wives? No. The answer is no. I mean, if they come here, they already got a wife with them. And again, uh, it's because little dick energy or, or who you hurt want, you? Who hurt you or you want a bitch you can control. And then it, it, it starts sounding condescending towards the women as if we as American women are inherently better than these women. Mm -hmm. What you're not acknowledging is like, you speak one language, she speaks five. You know what I'm saying? You got your bachelor's, she might have her master's. Mm -hmm. But because she knows speak English too well, you think you're better than her. And it's mm -hmm. like, that's also some of that American condescension. But like I was talking to Courtney Michelle today, I was like, yo, we gotta evolve this conversation past just saying, oh, these niggas don't get no hoes and that's why they running away and shit like that. Right. It's not that simple. Now, there's a question I commonly ask when um, I may be talking, telling with a homegirl of mine, or even somebody I may be interested in, mm -hmm. and they want to take a shot at a, a more deaf uh, perception of me. Mm -hmm. And um, I usually ask them when they say something similar to, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. That's a common one. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Some of them are funny when um, they be like, yo, this, this working stuff, which I, find, I just find it funny. This working stuff is ghetto. I'm trying to get a, like, I believe in some gender roles. <laughs> I'm just trying to be at the house. And I usually ask them like, so what is it that you want to contribute to life? What is it that you want to contribute to society? And that usually, it's like a very balanced question where there's no offense that can be taken and it makes you go, hmm. Cause I mean, it's a question I asked myself one time, uh, when I was down on my luck. I said, what is it that I actually want to do? What's your legacy? Right. And I just throw that to them. Mm. And it usually goes around, I've only met like a couple that were like super duper career woman oriented. Mm. But most of them, it just kind of boils down to some of the basics. Yeah. I want a nice man, I want a home, I want to be able to do X, Y, and Z. <clears throat> but the path they're taking is completely, as you Come said earlier, now. masculine power, like man prowess. Stuff that we can, I believe that we naturally just take on. My thing though is like, <clears throat> there's this, prevailing idea among women in general, but I would say black women in particular, that when it happens, I'll know. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that specifically is, when I meet a man who is dot, 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 then I'll become dot, 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 dot. When I meet a masculine man, I'll become soft. Mm -hmm. When I meet a man who takes care of the bills, I'll become a homemaker and shit like that. And yeah. it's like, yo, you talking about getting to the league, but you're not even on your high school basketball team yet. Mm -hmm. You talking about getting to the league, but you don't even work out. You know what I'm saying? And it's this fairy tale kind of idea that, uh, what was that, so I'm every woman, it's all in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, no, it's not. It's not all in you. <laughs> you don't know how to, this, this, this isn't about magic, this is about competence. Yeah. The caliber of man that you're asking for, he has requirements. He has standards. Your job is not just to look around and be, uh, 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 to sit around and be pretty. And even if, like, um, let's say you find a Wolf of Wall Street type nigga, mm -hmm. like, and even if your job, you gotta cook the whole nine and your job is to be pretty. No, your job is to get him deals as well. Yeah. When he take you to the government, uh, to the governor's ball, like, are you the person who can finesse a room and get right. him in, in front of the right you people? You move in areas that I can't. Come on now. And you're not in practice doing that. What you're in practice doing is my job. Who the fuck I need you for? If I'm Kyrie, am I trying to draft another point guard or right. center? So learn how to rebound. You need somebody <laughs> in that position to catch don't, don't, don't worry about dribbling the ball like that's me. I got you. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't realize how important this shit was, man. Like somebody, somebody DM me today. He was like, yo, it's actually somebody I went to middle school with. He was like, yo, I've been watching your stuff, and man, this shit low-key saved my life. I don't know why yet. I asked him why, he hasn't responded yet, but I'm like, God damn. That's a lot of freaking weight. That's heavy. But I think the main thing though is like, and I think for better or worse, even with my critiques of Kevin Samuels, what he did was he low-key gave men permission to express themselves. Yes, he did. In a, in a world that doesn't want us to, right? right. And I think, I think low-key, even for, for, for better or worse, the shit that I say that's good, that's terrible, it's just, damn, it's, it's nice to see a brother say, say what we feel. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see a brother actually, like, be intelligent and articulate himself. Right. So when I see other brothers doing it, bro, however I can help, however I can support, man, yeah. that's, that's the type of time I'm on. And so, um, one time me and um, Heffer were talking, mm -hmm. and he was straight up like, um, now I do agree with him. Um, He's, he, <laughs> um, he was like, uh, yeah, all these, all these women out here talking about some that alpha woman, that alpha who? Oh, what? And he was going against the whole thing of that's not a thing. These, these you know, pressing on archetype. Which, I mean, I do agree to archetype in some form of fashion. Like, there's something that you identify with to build on, but to make your whole identity after just these preset of things, mm -hmm. you're, you're limiting yourself. So he disagreed with me, but I was stating. I may disagree with, you know, MGTOW and all that kind of stuff, but I, I understand why they exist. Mm -hmm. There's a place, there's a place needed for them. It's just, when you stay in it for too long, that's where the issue is. Facts. My brother, he stayed in it too long one time. I had to like, pull him out of what they call Red Pill Rage. Mm -hmm. Cause then his whole YouTube, um, timeline was full of women just shitting on black men. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, but there's like another set. Like you have to, you gotta got get out. You're in the echo chamber. Yeah. At that point. So, yeah. to your point, I understand why they exist. Yeah. It's needed. They got to get it out. Um, I just believe there's not like a, the next stage for them right now. That's what I'm trying to be. Because, and, and the thing I've been talking about the most recently, and I talked about this with Tyrese, I talked about this with Zion, even with Will Smith, like, we are creating these women. Like, literally fathering these women, right? But more than, every, uh, uh, more than anything, we're the ones incentivizing their behavior. We are. Who pays for OnlyFans? Men. Men. Who built OnlyFans? Men. Men. You see what I'm saying? Who's, who's, like, um, I was talking about uh, Tinder Select the other day. Mm -hmm. Ain't no woman signing up for that. Five hundred dollars a month for matches. Hell no. That's that's men. That's gonna be sugar daddy. It's gonna be tricks. So these women who are embracing this whole high class escort aesthetic, bad bitch aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So if 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 we starve the demand, the supply will starve. Mm -hmm. But we think that women are supposed to make these changes independent of the fact that we reward them for how they are currently. Because mm -hmm. we know it's easy, at least the dudes who get bitches, we understand it's easier to sleep with women now than right. it's ever been. Right, right, so it's right. like a part of me still wants them to hold on to some of that independent, modern girl, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, we gotta make our minds up, man. Do we want better kids and daughters? Or do we just want easy access? I mean, easy access is gonna get dead after a while. J. Cole said it best, you know, when one bitch don't feel the same no more, and he don't really kill the pain no more. Like, what, what, what are we doing? We're at fault. Yeah. And again, that doesn't... Because I, I, I see the two extremes of this. Like, one extreme is like, you know, the, the Eve, I guess the Eve paradigm. It's all they fault. Yeah. They were a curse and this, this and that. Lilith and all that good stuff. But then the other side is like, it's all men's fault. And it's like... Both things have to happen. Like, just like I was saying, women have to incentivize better types of men. Yeah. But men also have to set more boundaries. Two things can be true at the same time. We don't talk about the dudes who were calling Kevin Samuel's show. What you do for a living? I don't really have a job right Yo. now, you know what I'm saying? I'm on my mama's couch. Just, we don't talk about that. This man obliterated men. <laughs> Yo. Listen. It was kind of hard to listen to. I was like, God damn. You see, they needed to hear that, though. Yeah, they did. Women, on the other hand, and this is my critique of, of Kevin Samuels, God rest his soul. 
women, I've been doing this since college, bro, 2013. Women don't receive, I'm talking about from my mom, from my sisters, from women I've interviewed, from women in school, women I've dated, women don't receive it that way, bro. So it ends up just being catharsis yeah. and, and, and uh, domination porn for the men in Red Pill Rage. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, 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 yeah. And that's been my critique of some even female creators because like, you're not talking to women. Yeah. You're not, because they're not listening to that. Let's be real. Yeah. Your titles are black women that are all going ahead. Women ain't clicking on that. You're they're talking to men. So women. tell the truth. And then you have some of them selling testosterone. Yeah, I I'm saw like, that. I was shot. I'm like, okay, okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Name no names. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you said uh, this is what you want to do for the um, do for the the men is to make that next stage. Why? There has to be a a selfish point of this somewhere. The the next stage as far as like us taking ownership. Or no, just like when they when they when they are in that red pill environment, mm -hmm. and then it comes to that point where they gotta well, as you said earlier, evolve. Mm -hmm. And you have you want to make this landing spot for them? Mm -hmm. Why? Red pill rage is dangerous, bro. First and foremost, mm -hmm. when women are angry, motherfuckers get cussed out. Shit gets broken, thrown, shit like that. Mm -hmm. But men are angry, people could potentially die. Mm -hmm. Like incels, dangerous. Red pill rage, dang, even the government is investigating this aspect of the, of the uh, internet right now. And unfortunately, what they're not doing is making the distinction between, you know, fresh and fit and me, right? Um, but ultimately, like, for me, it boils down to internal locus of control and external. And I think a lot of red pill rage keeps you in this sense of, I'm the victim here. Mm. Um, there's nothing I can do. It's everybody else's fault. So resentment builds. And it disempowers you. And as a man, power is everything for us. Yeah. So for me, it's actually changing the paradigm and being like, yo, you ain't got to tolerate that girl. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You, you and even with the Yellow Flags uh, project, um, how can you be proactive in analyzing her? Mm -hmm. How can you be proactive in discerning if you guys work, right? Like I talk about um, rose-colored glasses. For us, unfortunately, our rose-colored glasses are on before we have sex with a woman, and then they come off after. For women, it's the opposite. For women, it's like, okay, what's wrong with this dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. we give him the little, you know what I'm saying? Then it's like, oh, I love him, and I don't know what's <laughs> wrong with it. So it switches, right? So I'm trying to encourage men, like, yo, get in the habit of taking that off. Yeah. Get in the habit of thinking about, will I like her past hit? Yeah. Will I like her past her pussy? Right? Mm. Will I like her past this this newness and the novelty of? I'm impressing this girl and she fine and she likes me and this is, is this sustainable? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, think about it like an employer. Think about it like a business owner. I don't just need you to help me take nice pictures for the company website. I need you to be able to fulfill these tasks as they're laid out by your job description, right. as they are intended by the gap that this company needs to fill from a skill set, from a competence standpoint. Right, 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 right. I need a mother to my children. I need a grandmother to my grandchildren. I need somebody who can carry on my legacy if for some reason I have to go to prison or I go to the grave. Your looks ain't gonna do that. It's no. cool, it's cool, but it's not gonna do that. So. For me, it's about, and unfortunately, most men don't get to that point until you experience a lot of women and you realize they're not sugar and spice and everything nice. Yeah. But if you haven't done that, you're like in this, I'm old this and I didn't get it. So I'm like, yo, if I could translate that to, to them, like these dudes who, who want models, mm. you don't want a model, bro. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you don't want a model. Like, they fine, they look good. And in my experience, any woman over a nine, Cuckoo. Mm -hmm. And it's not even their fault. It's it's the same reason why like athletes are dumb sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, if, if you're being rewarded for one aspect of your personality, you have no incentive to develop others. If you right. have a killer crossover, you're not working on your jump shot. You're not right. even coming to practice low key. 
you know so that's what happens with with them but again men aren't thinking about this with yeah, foresight yeah, yeah. we're just thinking about I bought this bitch flowers and she ain't like the flowers. I was told bitches, out, bitches like flowers. And it's like, no. Nah, it's more than that. It's, it's, yeah. Humans are complex, man. It's complex, man. It's, ch it's chess. It's chess, bro. But for a long time, I think it's been, at least in the manosphere, it's kind of been the blind leading the blind in a way. Like men who are not network with women, mm -hmm. men who don't have riz for real. Yeah. So they're just re-articulating the grievances of other men like that. Right, right, right. As right, opposed right. to men on the other side or men who, I, I consider myself somebody who's been on the fence. Mm -hmm. Like I've stepped into this world, but I've also stepped into that world. Yeah. To articulate to you that like, yo, it ain't what you think it is. It's not at all yeah. what you think it is. What you think you're missing out, you're really not. And I understand the companionship shit, but like also understand your peace. Also understand that as a man, you need to get comfortable being by yourself. For sure. You know, because that's what makes a woman respect you. Mm -hmm. Just like a negotiation. If, if, if I came to buy your car, right, and I give you a price for the car, you don't want the car. I mean, you don't want to sell it at that price. And I say, well, it was great meeting you. Have a nice day. I'm walking. You be, hey, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hey, let's rethink it. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, okay, how about this? How about this? How about this? You know I'm desperate. So you might even end up selling it to me at a, at a higher price than you intended on in the first place. Right, right, That's what's right. happening with these men. Now these women are saying, oh, I want $300 dates, I don't want cheesecake and shit like that. And men are like, I'm, I'm going to, I'm gonna meet that demand. And it's like, are you seeing the niggas who are winning? They're not meeting that demand. No. They're not emotionally intelligent. They're not financially well off, whatever the case may be. But he's gonna fuck your bitch because he understands something you don't. Mm -hmm. And we can continue to blame the women, but like, it's, it's more than that, man. Way more than that. Way more than that.